Hey guys and welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in today's tutorial we will be learning about payloads. In the previous tutorial I have taught you about uh, Metasploit, Metaprito and the exploit. So if you have not gone through that then I would recommend you going through all of those tutorials because else you will not understand what exactly payload is. So uh, a payload in Metasploit refers to an exploit module. So there are different types of payload modules in Metasploit framework such as singles, stagers and stages. These different types allow for a great deal of versatility and it can be useful across numerous types of scenarios. Whether or not a payload is staged, it is represented by a slash in the payload name. So for example, let me just show you. I'll just go ahead and open the MSF console. And while the time it opens, I'll show you how exactly a payload would look like. So if I wanted a Windows, uh, let's say uh, bind TCP payload, then I'll just go ahead and use Windows slash bind underscore TCP, something like that. It's a single payload with no stage, whereas Windows uh, uh, consists of a stager and a stage. So uh, it might be a bit confusing to understand. So bind TCP is uh, the stager and if you want to go ahead and check the stage then I can just go ahead and type shell underscore bind TCP. So shell over here is the stage whereas bind TCP is the stager. So uh, three things that I would be covering today in detail would be the singles, the stagers and the stages. So we have our MSF console open. So singles are payloads that are self-contained and uh, they're completely standalone. A single payload can be used, can be used uh, or it can be something as simple as a user or adding a user to the target system or running a calculator period exe file. After that we have stagers and stages set up a network connection between the attacker and the victim and are designed to be small and reliable. It is difficult to always do both of these so both of these well so the result is multiple uh, similar stagers. Metasploit will use the best one when it can and a fallback to a less preferred one when it's not necessary or when it's necessary. So Windows NX or NT version versus the no NX stager, they contain nothing. Reliability issues for the NX CPUs and DEP NX stages are bigger. That's it's a virtual allocation. And default for now is NX plus Windows 7 compatible. So you don't need to worry about that. After that we have stages. So stages are payload components that are downloaded by uh, stagers modules. The varied, uh, various payload stages provide advanced features with no size limits such as Metapreter or let's say VNC injection or even the iPhone iPod shell. Payload stages automatically use middle stages. A single receive fail with large payloads. The single stager uh, receives or you can say as a single receive fails with large payloads. Uh, the stager receives uh, the middle stager and the middle stager then performs a full download and it will go ahead and read write and can perform any kind of those tasks. So um, expanding on payload types in Metasploits. So I have briefly covered three main uh, types that is singles, stagers and stages. Metasploit contains many different types of payloads, each serving a unique role within the framework. So let's take a brief look at the various types of payloads available and get an idea of when ex each uh, type should be used exactly. So let's start with the uh, let's start with the non-staged inline module, a single payload containing the exploit and full shell code for the selected task. Inline payloads are by design are you can say as it, it's by design more stable than their counterparts because they contain everything all in one. So however some uh, exploits will not support the resulting size of these payloads but still some will. So these are how the inline non stage uh, look like. After that we have the stager payloads which work in conjunction with uh, the stage payloads in order to perform a specific task. A stager establishes a communication channel between the attacker and the victim and reads in a stage payload to execute on the remote host Metapreter. And Metapreter is the short form of Meta Interpreter uh, which is an advanced multifaceted payload that operates via DLL injection. The Metapreter resides completely in the memory of the remote host and leaves no traces on the hard drive making it exceptionally difficult to detect with conventional forensic techniques. Scripts and plugins can be loaded and unloaded dynamically as required and 
Peer-to-peer -peer development is very strong and constantly evolving. So whenever you go ahead and try to run some kind of payload on your system and you execute a meterpreter into their shell, uh, you don't need to worry about it because normally no one will actually be able to gather any kind of information whether you actually went ahead and ga gathered any kind of information or you actually hacked into that because there are no traces left on the hard drive. It only works on the uh, memory or the virtual memory and you don't even need to worry about uh, the uh, RAM uh, cleaning the RAM because it's not that hard after all but still there are chances that some people may try to find you out if uh, they are checking that but still uh, if they're checking what are, are the things that are actually consuming RAM but still that's again a totally different story because uh, payload or the meter meter does not eat any kind of resources it's a simple PowerShell or a command prompt kind of thing which will hardly use like a few kilobytes. So you don't need to worry about any of these things because normally any kind of application if that's running it will take probably a few MB like 6-7 MB or up to more than even 100 MB. So you don't need to, um, so people will not actually go ahead and be able to understand it until and unless the person is actually uh, far far smart. After that we have the PassiveX payload. So PassiveX is a payload that can help in circumventing restrictive outbound firewalls. It does this by using the ActiveX control to create a hidden instance of the Internet Explorer and using the uh, new ActiveX control it will communicate with the attacker via HTTP request and responses. So I'll just go ahead and explain this to you in detail. Let's say for example you have a firewall inbuilt but somehow uh, the person is uh, uh, has gotten into your computer but after he has sent you the exploit, the exploit successfully passed on through the computer. But it is not able to go ahead and reach uh, out or it is not able to create a backend connection through the meterpreter to our own Kali Linux. So what the PassiveX will do is that it will create a fake uh, internet explorer type of um, let's say uh, networking prompt. And I'll just show you how exactly it looks like. I'll just go ahead in the task manager. And I'll just go to the process. Okay, it won't take me. Okay, so this is how it will look like. So the firewall will probably think that uh, um, it will probably think that okay, it's not a big deal because Internet Explorer is trying to gain access. So it will look something like uh, it's actually uh, something from the Internet Explorer that is trying to gain access, and the firewall will actually allow it. The reason being that it's going from inside to outside and not actually going to some random connection from some random uh, application. So uh, that's how strong it is. So after that we have the no NX module. So the no NX is a short form for no execute bit and it is a feature built in into some CPUs to prevent code from executing into certain areas of memories. In Windows NX is implemented as DEP that is data execution prevention and the Metasploit no NX payloads are designed to circumvent the DEP. So it's not a big deal to go ahead and bypass that as well. After no NX, um, now you know what no NX is, we have the ORD that's ordinal payloads and ordinal payloads are Windows Stager. They are based, uh, they are Windows Stager based payloads which have distinct advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantages being it uh, such as it works on every flavor and language of Windows such as XP, Windows NT, Windows 98, uh, Windows uh, 2000, it doesn't matter which until unless it is Windows and it works on DOS. And without the explicit definition of a return address. So they are extremely very tiny. However, two very specific disadvantages of ordinal payloads make them not the difficult choice. The first thing that it relies on is the fact that WS2 underscore 32 period DLL is loaded into the process and it is being exploited before exploitation which is not exactly happens every time and the second thing being that it's a bit less stable than the other stages so that's quite a not a good thing for uh, the, for us hackers to go ahead and execute those kind of payload but it works in every kind of thing uh, in all types of windows so until unless you have these two things running uh, it won't matter so after that we have the IPv6 payloads and 
The Metasploit IPv6 payloads, as the name indicates, are built into the function over IPv6 networks. So not much to know about all of these things, but these are the basics that you should know before going ahead and actually using, start using the payloads because they can be quite harmful not only to uh, the person whom you're trying to attack, but can be you even if you're trying to go ahead and do some kind of mischief as well. So that would be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be continuing with the reflective DLL injection and generating a payload for Metasploit.